Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about orchid roots. I wanted to um, just do a little bit of a discussion on there. I just did a video on sort of a discussion on how often to water orchids, when you should water orchids. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out as well. I have some of the same plants here on my table that I used in that um, discussion that I'm gonna use again, but for a totally different topic. The one in my hand here is a cattleya. And so I just wanted to touch base on, my main question I always get is, what are aerial roots? Should I cut them off? Are they good? Are they bad? Are they indifferent? Does it matter? Um, so I wanted to sort of touch base on that and just sort of share with you my thoughts, just sort of as dis a discussion. So this is a cattleya. I mounted this guy as a tiny little seedling on this piece of fir bark probably five or six years ago. It's grown into a nice plant. It's even flowered for the last several years anyways. And I love the way it looks. It looks very natural. You can see the roots here. There's no added moss to it. I didn't do a moss bed first. I did this little chunk of moss down here when it was a seedling, but nothing, nothing's been added. It's just a bare chunk of fir bark. And this, although unnatural, is about as close to what an orchid would look like growing in the wild that I have in the greenhouse here. They certainly don't grow in pots. They certainly don't grow on dead wood. So I had a, the, the privilege of going to an orchid talk at um, my orchid society. I think it was this summer. And one of the topics, uh, just for a, a few brief minutes, was about orchid roots and how orchids grow on trees. Um, and what we do differently as hobbyists. And ours are growing in pots in the wild, they're growing on trees, at least if they are um, an orchid that grows in trees. And they look just like this. So the only difference between this one and one growing in on a live tree is the bark is still alive. Um, it's not deteriorating, it's not breaking down. And it is sort of, you know, minerals washed down the tree trunk from all the leaves and it fertilizes the plant that way. It's got a whole lot more surface area for, and, and the tree branches act like a funnel and all the minerals and bird poop and monkey poop, they all funnel down the trunk and it would fertilize this plant. So, but the main difference is that orchid is going to grow indefinitely on that trunk of the tree until that something happens to that tree or something happens to the orchid and gets eaten or something like that. But it's never going to need to be repotted. It's never going to need anything other than what it has. So why is that? What is the difference? You know, the one thing that really hit home, he said, if that tree was to die and fall over, that orchid would also die. The tree would go rotten. The orchid would maybe survive a year, two, three, but eventually that orchid would die instead of living next to indefinitely. And it sort of, it sort of got me thinking, I was like, well, what are we doing so differently? And, you know, this came up in his discussion too. The way we grow orchids is very unnatural. And that is one of the reasons we are constantly having to repot orchids. And they don't naturally grow on dead wood. They don't naturally grow in dead wood. Dead wood rots and decays and releases all kinds of stuff that um, a normal live tree would not release, which is why it's really hard on the orchids and the roots. So what I took out of that was... An orchid that is growing in a pot is about as unnaturally growing as you could possibly have it growing. It makes sense that orchid roots rot with all that sort of debris and decay in there. So the next thing that sort of I think of is, well, what is the next best step to a live tree? Because we can't mount our orchids on trees, at least most of us can't. And that would be the other thing that an orchid on a tree would do they would produce these aerial roots. Now, not all orchids produce aerial roots. Not all orchids in all conditions produce aerial roots. Um, I'm lucky because of the high humidity in here, I get a fair amount of aerial roots and I absolutely love them. I think that an aerial root is about as natural as we can come to an orchid growing in the wild. This root, as long as nothing happens to it, it's not in any media that's gonna break down. It's going to, I just watered it to make them a little bit softer because I didn't want to break them. It absorbs water, it absorbs nutrients, just the same. Um, I think it's an absolutely fantastic way to grow them. And I'm going to just switch pots here again. I'm sure all of you have experienced this, where your orchid is literally growing outside the pot. 
It's completely root bound. It's doing wonderful. It's growing outside the pot. Nice healthy roots all around it. The second we decide to repot this and put these roots in media, they are going to die. And it's going to set back the orchid. I don't know why they die. These are air roots. They're not meant to be in any kind of media. As discussed, they're certainly not meant to be in dead media. That would normally kill the plant. So there's, there's sort of a dilemma of using the unnatural media. These roots are so nice and healthy. You never find a healthier root than an aerial root. Let's be honest here. The roots in the pots never never sort of measure up to the, the um, aerial roots. So I absolutely love them. Now, this isn't a discussion about how we repot this guy or what we're going to do. But I think um, after that sort of discussion that I heard back in the summertime, I'm going to let aerial roots thrive and survive as long as they can. You know, this plant is going to crawl down the pot and continue to grow. And it is doing a wonderful job of it already. These three bulbs here, four bulbs, they're, they're not even in the media. The media that's in there is not even affecting them. They're on the outside of the pot. And so they are trying to cling to the plastic and grow into it a little bit. And that sort of gives you the next sort of media that I think, you know, might not be that bad of media, is instead of the natural bark here that rots and breaks down, if you can't have an aerial root or an aerial root that grows onto something that is inorganic and isn't going to break down or at least I don't want to say inorganic because a clay pot would be a good example too of something it could grow to and as long as you're not trying to transplant it I think it could be happy on a clay pot not in a clay pot because of the media but on the outside of a clay pot for a very very long time so I'm just going to this year let the aerial roots grow because the second I try to divide this and plant this nice healthy piece with all these roots in a new pot I'm going to um, have some root rot, just guaranteed. So that's that one. And that brings us to <clears throat> this guy here. He's still dripping a little bit as well. This is a Phalaenopsis. I just watered him again to make the roots a little bit more pliable in case I um, bend them and break them. But if you ever notice that some fowls just they have arrow roots and they have tons of them. So here, this is where this fowl is a perfect example of the question I always get. Should I cut these roots off? What should I do with these roots? So my, my thought on it is, and you know, I'm not necessarily right. Everybody has their own opinion, but I love aerial roots. I'm not going to cut this off. I think this is a perfectly healthy fowl. It is beautiful. And you know what? If something happens in the pot and the media sours before I can transplant it and the roots die in there, it has full healthy roots. So as long as I'm not changing this plant's environment, and this one grows in the house, it doesn't grow in the greenhouse. Remember I have that new grow space now. This one's growing in the grow space happily. It sits some um, on a tray, so the roots are in the tray, and when it gets watered, the roots sit in a little bit of water for a few hours. Um, there's fans there for circulation, and it is the house, so it is drier than the greenhouse, and the water evaporates and adds to the humidity in the room, but it just loves it. And until I do something silly and somehow wreck these roots, these roots will live a very, very long time. As long as they don't get cooked, broken, dried out, or anything like that too much. Great um, set of roots on this. So, to everybody who asks, should I cut off the roots on my Phalaenopsis, the air roots? I'm going to say absolutely not. I love them. They're great. I think it's a sign of a healthy plant. You can't have this plant growing on a tree although that would be the most natural but these aerial roots would also be hanging down off the tree as well it would look just like this on the tree with all these aerial roots coming down and i think they are the second most natural roots you can have other than having the roots anchored to the live tree itself the most unnatural roots you can have are the roots that are in the media that are eventually going to succumb to broken down media like um the speaker said in the beginning of my talk that he said in his talk this, this fowl, or the orchid he gave an example, will grow on a tree almost indefinitely unless something happens to it, or unless something happens to the tree and the tree falls down, the tree is no longer alive and becomes dead wood, which is exactly what we use in our pots. So once it becomes dead wood, the, the orchid on that fallen tree is destined to eventually die too. Anyways, there's just a little discussion on orchid roots, specifically orchid air roots and what you should do with them. You now have my opinion. It's just my opinion. Feel free to form your own opinion. Leave it in the comments below. Do you like orchid roots? Do you cut off the orchid root, the aerial orchid roots? Do you try to stuff them back in the pot? How has your luck been?
planting aerial roots in a pot itself with new media, do those roots quickly rot or do you have good success with that? Anyways, let me know in the comments below. I hope you like this video and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Another interesting fact, I don't know if you guys know that we grow Phalaenopsis orchids nearly upside down. When they grow on a tree, they grow just like this. They have lots of warm weather, lots of rain, and the crown itself is pointing downward, so the water just wicks its way out. So no matter how much water it gets, the crown it never sits with water in. That's the way I wish we could all grow Phalaenopsis orchids right there. That's beautiful. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys.